Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I told you many times that uh, these guys uh, in a higher position than uh, some of us uh, are not necessarily uh, smarter or better than us. Uh, usually they're not, they are sneakier, okay? And uh, maybe ruthless, a little bit more ruthless. I have here an article coming from a uh, senior White House correspondent, an expert about news and, uh, you know, international relations, writing a little article uh, um, in reference to Putin's speech to the nation. And he's going to tell us what he understood and what he wants us to understand from what that evil man called Putin uh, uttered, yelled, whatever. Okay, so let's go to this uh, little article coming from uh, the, uh, the, the United States' Uh, the free world's uh, media, the good people's media. And this article comes from Yahoo News. And this is the title. Nukes, Nazis and Lies. Five takeaways from Putin's annual address to Russia. This is from Alexander Nazarian. All right, this could, should be, uh, I think, Armenian, but it doesn't really matter. He's a senior White House correspondent, so that means he's the best. He's the best these guys have from the White House correspondent. This guy right here, okay? This is from February 21st, 2023. Vladimir Putin's State of the Nation address came as the war in Ukraine nears its first anniversary. anniversary. All right, let's see and unpack this guy's claim, okay? We have here. Um, let's start with the first uh, issue here. One. He says nuclear threat updated and elevated. Okay, let's see when, maybe he's gonna tell us what is the threat, what the, was the threat leveled, and oh, that's not diversity here whatsoever. How are these guys making it? Oh, I think that's why they're so weak. Because here in the United States of America, the government tells us that uh, diversity is our strength. I don't see diversity here. They all look the same. This guy is the identical twin to this one, biological twin to this one, and the same here. What I didn't identify as miss, or oh, sorry for uh, assuming that you are a miss. Anyway, Putin's most new worthy and arguably most troubling announcement was that Russia is suspending its cooperation in the New START treaty negotiated in 2010. Okay, why is that? And he says that um, while the announcement does not mean the nuclear was in, is imminent, okay, thank you, it does signal the end of the effort to reduce the threat of such a conflict, most famously symbolized by the 1986 meeting between Reagan and Gorbachev. Okay, Putin's announcement appeared to be predicated on the false assertion, okay, that the United States was conducting nuclear tests of its own, which it has, in fact, not done since 1992. No, that's not right. That's not, that's false to what you say. And let's say here, of course, and I'm quoting, this is, this is, this weasel's argument that he says false assertion. So let's see Putin's false assertion. And I'm quoting Putin. Of course, we will not do this first. Okay. So that's in the future. But if, if the United States conducts tests, not the United States conducted already, then we will. No one should be to, to have, no one should have dangerous illusions that global strategic parity can be destroyed. So this, this is Nazarian's argument for false assertion that the United States was conducting. No, that's false. That's first what you said over there, what's here. Let me tell you what Putin said. The US and NATO are saying outright that their goal is to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia. And after this, they are going to tour our defense sites as if nothing is happening. All right, Nazarian, go and... F anyway, so this is, again, false assertion, he didn't make a point. Now he goes and blah, 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 tells it what's supposed to be. Second, it's still about the Nazis. Listen to this argument of a toddler. The Kremlin initially justified its invasion of Ukraine by arguing that it was necessary to denazify, in quote, the ruling regime in Kiev. The argument was nonsensical. And here comes Nazarian's 
uh, uh, argument. To begin with, as Ukrainian President Zelensky is the first Jewish person to lead the country. So he says it can't have Nazis in over there in the uh, regime or in the government because the leader is Jewish. Okay, then let me give you this. I'm going to use the same logical uh, logic that he used, logic, you know what I mean? And say, since President Barack Obama, who identifies as black and everybody is happy that he's black, even though he's uh, biracial, but hey, the first black president, I didn't hear the first biracial, did you? From me now. So, the since we have the first black president, how can you accuse this country of being a racist country? Can't be can be a racist country anywhere because we have the leader as being black. So there's, there can't be racism against the a black population because the president is over there. That's nonsense. Okay. So again, Nazarian is an idiot. Let's move on. All right. It's a war for culture. All right. Let's see. I have a lot of arguments here, but I don't know if I can uh, utter them on YouTube. Putin has long been a favorite of nationalists in both Europe and the United States, who, okay, who have regarded his authoritarian, militaristic and superficially Christian regime as a model to emulate. First, uh, Mr. Nazarian, uh, you know how, what's the name of Russia, as you call it? It's called the Russian Federation. Russia consider or the Russian Federation, I just got carried away, carried away with this guy's idiocracy. He, it considered itself a multicultural and multi-ethnic state. So the thing with nationalism doesn't really work for him. All right, that's the, the first one. Authoritarian, uh, based on what? What is he doing? I would like evidence. Militaristic, how many military bases does uh, the Russian Federation have? outside of its territory. Uh, hello, I made a video on that. Actually, they have like two. One in Kazakhstan and one in Syria. How many does the non-militaristic country of the good, United States, 750 or something, uh, locations where they have military uh, equipment? So who's the more militaristic, militaristic? And then superficially Christian regime. And he never said that he's a Christian regime. What are you talking about? As a model to emulate. Remember, he's talking about war of culture. Well, Mr. Uh, uh, Nazarian, it says here, Putin has you even used the language of cancel culture to make his case in appear apparent and not entirely unsuccessful appeal to Western conservatives. So now they lump the Western conservatives, there are not too many in the United States of America anyway, to Putin being an evil guy. And he tells us here that uh, they talk, uh, Putin criticized a new Church of England proposal to refer to God by gender, gender neutral pronouns. Okay, and this, this is what Putin said. They distort historical facts, constantly attack our culture, the Russian Orthodox Church and other traditional religious religions of our country. Religions. Okay, look at what they did to their own peoples. The destruction of the family cultural and national identity, perversion, and the abuse of children are declared the norm, he warned. Okay, let's see. Uh, I know that, uh, why I know, because I hear it every day here in the States of America, that uh, we like diversity and uh, cultures and tradition of everybody should be embraced and never criticized and respected because they're all equal. Remember, that's the uh, postmodernism, uh, modernistic way of looking at, or neo Marxist way of looking at of, of things. Uh, Beethoven's music is the same as 50 cent music, okay? Or, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever. I'm not gonna go in, into it deep, okay? That, that's the same, the same value, the same, you know, is the same. So, I'm just giving an example. So, in this case, we cannot talk of a, per, a country's traditions, culture, historical values. You can't unless they are designated as being bad. 
and Russia is designated as being bad. So then, if Russia has a tradition of considering, you know, marriage like this, or religion like this, or they recite the Bible and say, uh, dear God, dear, dear God, did, did Father in Heaven, instead of saying, dear parent in Heaven, that's bad, according to these guys. Well, this is Nazarian who kind of makes fun of the Putin using his culture to say, well, this is our culture and these guys have that culture. What am I supposed to do? Change it to theirs? Yes. So Putin feels threatened that his culture, his traditions, his national identity should change to accepting the perversity. What's a perversity? If you look in the dictionary, and we still take dictionaries as being... Uh, uh, valid. Perversity, perversity is a deviation, deviation from normality. All right? Normality is norm, normal, n in normal terms, majority. So if, uh, let's say, an organism behaves in a certain way in general with another organism and something outside of that becomes a perversion of the rule. There have always been special cases where you have deviant behavior or deviant cases. You will always have that. Okay? I don't want to say always, but you will have that. It doesn't mean that the general rule is still not valid. On the contrary, it uh, reinforces the, the, the main rule, the general rule. So, in this case, he calls perversion all kind of things that occur now in other cultures, which is yeah, you, not uh, culture relativism. He's saying, no, 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 they have their little thing. We call it perversion because it's outside of normality. I mean... We know exactly what I'm talking about. And here he said, we have this one. And they want to destroy that. If we don't uh, agree to their culture, then we're going to be, you know, uh, some considered bad. Let's move on here to the next uh, bullshit of Nazarian. And he said, surprising the ominous tone of last fall speech celebrating the illegal annexation of four Ukraine regions, Putin darkly warned that millions of people in the West understand they are being led to a real spiritual cat catastrophe. Well, this, that's his assessment. And many people, I think, uh, could uh, join that uh, kind of uh, assessment of reality. Uh, unless you get arrested for having a difference of, of opinion. Not yet. Russia is the victim. All right. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia has invaded Chechnya, twice Georgia and Ukraine. First in 2014. Okay, how many countries, countries did the United States, the forces of good, invade and wrecked? Let me go and uh, start with NATO because they never invaded alone because courage is always in packs and groups, you know. So they attacked, they bombarded Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia did not attack NATO. Uh, they uh, destroyed Iraq. Iraq did not attack NATO. They destroyed um, Afghanistan, the same thing. They destroyed Libya, the same thing. They, inv they, they still have troops. The United States has troops in Syria. Uh, uh, it's an independent and sovereign state as uh, Ukraine. So, you know what? Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself, right? Uh, what's his name? Eric Clapton. So, we have here, it's true, but everything has a, uh, how should I put it, a, um, uh, a value. When I say, when I talk about value, you I say, oh, they have uh, reasons to do this. Okay. Okay. And then, this is one of the uh, reasons why uh, they say, the Russians claim they uh, intervened in Ukraine. Charging the West with Russophobia and extremely aggressive nationalism, Putin cast the Ukraine invasion not as a war of aggression. He started by, but as a proxy conflict the West is using to destroy Russia. He charged that the recent security conference in Munich, attended by Vice President Kamala Harris, was an endless stream of accusations against Russia. So, and then we got the last one here. Remember this one here. Russia is the victim. Well, if you move NATO to my borders and NATO attacked so many uh, sovereign countries, how should I consider you? A friend? <laughs> I can't consider you a friend. You know what I mean? Now, Russia will win. Well, it has nuclear weapons. I don't think it can lose. Now, here's what he says. Putin once imagined himself as one of Russia's great leaders on par with Peter the Great or Stalin. Now he is regarded as a criminal by much of the world. How do you know that, Nazarian? How do you know that? Did you uh, ask uh, the world? Uh, how, many, uh, how many people say yes? How many people say no? Well, that's just a claim. 
with backed by no evidence. What do you mean much of the world? Give me the number. We don't have a number. And even loyalists are said to be plotting to succeed him. This again, this is just toddler level argumentation. All right, this is, well, <laughs> what can I say, man? Uh, Russia will answer, I'm quoting, any challenges because we are one people. Oops. Putin said near the end of uh, Tuesday's speech, the crowd which seemed some, 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 somnolent at times stood and clapped. See this guy? This guy is a piece of shit. That's what it is. That's his, uh, you know, that's his, and this guy's, oh my God, we're going to fall asleep. Well, I got to uh, remember how the United States um, Senate and the House clapped when a foreign leader came to the United States and uh, had a little speech. And every time that person or that entity comes to the United States uh, in the capital and has a speech, these guys are doing squads like crazy. Can you, and they have to be like seals. Do you know who that person is? You know what entity that is? Well, why don't you look and see? And you tell me those versus this. Yes, but we are the good people. They are the evil ones. So this little hack, this little hack, there's Nazarian. Let's, let's look. Uh, he's uh, having a little thing here. So this Nazarian right here, he is, look at him. He is a guy who is a hack. He's a senior. And how old is this guy? Look at him. Anyway, I, let's put this. I mean, I don't want to make fun of him as... Uh, you know, that's not the, the whole point here, it's not even the point. But this guy, hey, keep your mouth closed, uh, is just, is not, is not an analyst. He's, he's not a, a White House correspondent, a, uh, a uh, senior. This guy is just a 100% propagandist and with a level of really, really low. I could have made this video three hours and discuss each and every claim that he made over there. Not, not rebuff it. That's not was the point. It was complete his one-sided way of looking at things. One-sided. That was it. So this guy is a, uh, an important guy if you look at it and uh, he's thinking this way. And the fact is that I know about the subject. Uh, let's, let's imagine we don't know about this anything and we just read uh, whatever this guy said. What, what are we going to understand out of this? Whatever Nazarian tells us, that's what it is. And uh, uh, we have to deal with these people all the time. As I said, I don't want them to tell me what I want to hear. I want them to tell me, to inform me, to give me... This guy is just giving a piece of his interpretation, trying to uh, uh, form an opinion of a population. How many people read the, uh, this guy's garbage? Anyway, I'm glad that he's around because I can have the opportunity to uh, complete his garbage, okay? And make it a little bit less garbage, I would say. But still, he's going to be over there, but so uh, will I. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.